In the summer of 2015, Phoebe Bargatti was 23 years old and had a new master's degree in journalism from Stanford, but little other experience, when she landed what most of her peers would consider a dream job associate producer at Vice's Los Angeles Bureau. Though her job hadn't technically started yet, her boss, then editor in chief Jason Mojica, invited her to join the team at the LA Press Club Awards. After accepting an award for public service and journalism, the team from Vice, including Mohika and Kaj Larson, the bureau chief who had hired Bargaudi, celebrated with drinks. By the end of the night, Bargaudi says a very drunk Larson and brought up sex musing about his chances with a group of black girls at the bar, asking her for a ride home, then passed out in her car. I had not even started work and he was being so inappropriate. She remembers that things just got weirder. Bargatti says within her first few weeks on the job, Larson was asking her to meet him at his home in Venice Beach. She thought it was strange but he was her boss, so she complied. As she waited outside his house she texted a friend her location, like how you tell a friend before a Tinder date in case you get murdered, when a shirtless Larson walked up and told her to come wait inside his bungalow while he took a shower. She felt uncomfortable. Was she being too prudish? Overly offended? She thought, my family is Muslim, maybe this is just how people are in L.A. Question mark The discomforting interactions continued. Bargaudi says Larson would touch her at work, on the small of the back, on her bare thigh, in ways that he didn't touch the other employees. And she wasn't producing much journalism. Instead, Larson, a former Navy SEAL turned journalist, had her do things like accompany him to parties in the Hollywood Hills. At one party, Larson demonstrated headsets, telling the group that he would be the first person to report in virtual reality from a war zone. Larson told her he was grooming her, but Bargatti felt instead like she was being shown off as arm candy. The Daily Beast spoke with more than a dozen former and current Vice employees in recent weeks about the culture for women inside Vice Media, and they painted a picture of harassing behavior and company indifference. Larson did not respond to requests for comment for this story. Mohika declined to comment that Vice issued a statement to the Daily Beast that read the nature of Vice's content runs a gamut, from travelogues and news series to more provocative programming like our shows exploring drug culture, we did get in a bon appetit. A non-traditional workplace agreement is often used by companies to certify employees' comfort with content that could be considered edgy. However, it does not in any way sanction conduct that is disrespectful or biased and we will investigate all allegations of such behavior, including any incidents where employees purportedly attempted to justify their conduct through the agreement. We have immediately begun reviewing this matter. Dot months into her new job, Bargatti says she went to a human resources representative to voice her concern about the touching in the parties. When it comes to talent, we can't really tell them what to do, Bargatti recalls being old. They bring in the money and attention and you just have to deal with it. The representative disputes this account. And so she did, until after a fall editorial meeting with the East Coast office where she says she asked the producers on the other end of the call to quiet down so she could finish her pitch. Following the call, which went well, she thought, she says Larson held her by the arm and said, If you're going to get anywhere with Vice Guys, you're going to have to be a lot sweeter. Doubt these events were corroborated by a member of Vice's Los Angeles team at the time and internal emails reviewed by the Daily Beast. Doubt it felt like a threat, Bargatti says. The way he looked at me, the way he grabbed my arm. I remember feeling scared. And I didn't want my career to be built on how sweet I am to the minute Vice thought when the new manager reached out to Bargatti and a second female employee, asking what they thought Vice could do to turn the LA office around. They emailed him a bullet and list of their concerns. As it stands, we don't think anything will change, but we'd like to at least have these things on the record, they wrote. Their list included Larson's sexist comments, the parties, and a general lack of opportunity. And, they added, Phoebe doesn't like it when Kaj touches her at all. At all. In conclusion, they wrote, hostility due to sexism, racism, religionism, ageism, I'd quitism makes us feel not only uncomfortable, but unsafe and just plain dirty. And yes, they added, we've both already talked to HR about those uncomfortable comments and situations. Vice founders Gavin McInnes and Shane Smith have been open about the fact that the Vice brand was built, at least in